to the message for today, just speaking about sleeping and standing. Uh, I used to laugh at my father who would fall asleep when the TV would go on. And what do I find myself doing with exactly the same thing? So they might be standing here today, but I didn't get a lot of sleep, so I may start talking in my sleep to you as well. So, uh, blessings on that. Grace to you, peace from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Unexpected peace. That's what our gospel lesson talks about in the midst of the storms of life that it seems we all face at various times, our gracious God reaches out to us to remind us of his presence and power in everything that happens. You remember back to 2005 when Hurricane Katrina slammed into New Orleans. There was enough blame to go around in that disaster for everyone. Actually, the mayor was blamed, the director of FEMA was blamed, the uh, Governor of Louisiana was blamed, even the President of the United States got involved in the blame. Those who built the levees were blamed. And finally there was blame for those who didn't get out of town soon enough. Guess what? Storms happen. We know in just this past year, Santa Rosa fire, among many others that took place and devastated neighborhoods, changed people's lives forever. Storms happen. Jesus faced storms, and in the gospel lesson for today, they're on the Sea of Galilee, a storm blows up. Why were the disciples shocked? Several of them were fishermen. They had been on the Sea of Galilee in the past when storms had blown up. What would cause them to be fearful? And by the way, why do you and I get all shaken up when we face the storms of life, when things happen? that we weren't expecting. <coughs> Sometimes we think that storms only happen to bad people or to people who are doing something evil. But we also have to remember that storms are a part of life. Later in life, Peter writes these words about storms. He says, Dear friends, do not be surprised at the painful trial you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. Think about it. We should expect at time, storms to come. And we'll look at what that's all about in a moment. For example, think of Abraham. Here he was, well past child-bearing age, his wife as well, and yet God made a promise. You're going to have a son. In fact, you're going to have so many offspring, you won't be able to count them. But it's going to start with one son, and they had to wait 25 more years for that one son to be born. And then when they receive that son of promise, after several years, God says, okay, give him back to me. Take him up to the mount and give him to me. And Abraham is ready to do that. So you can be sure life is filled with storms. You've been through them as well. An illness, a death of a loved one, a verdict of cancer, an airplane or automobile crash, the violence that goes on in our towns and cities, uh, wars, <coughs> religious struggles as well, even in our own church. That list could go on and on, couldn't it? Look, even some of us gathered here today are right now going through a storm of life. Life's difficult, praise God. Is that what gathers us together today? Look, some of us, have been through that storm and perhaps even going through it. And our gracious God says, I'm with you. I'll see you through. There are times when we want to ask, Jesus, don't you care? Don't you worry and can be concerned about what I'm worried and concerned about? The disciples said it this way, teacher, we'll perish. Let's see if I can get this. And then what does Jesus say to this? He says, remember what a storm of life does not mean. It doesn't mean that God is mad at you or doesn't love you or is angry with you or that God's getting back at you. You know, sometimes our storms that come in our life are self-made. We did something foolish and we pay for the consequences of it. But at other times, storms just plain happen. We live in a fallen world. For example, in Matthew 5, 45, 
God caused his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the just and the unjust. I think I got ahead of myself. In uh, Hurricane Andrew hit the Florida state and a reporter went around and noticed all the devastation except there was one man whose house was still standing while the rest of the homes in his neighborhood had been destroyed. The reporter asked, why did your house make it through this terrible tragedy while all the rest are having to be rebuilt? And he says, well, I built my house according to the Florida State Building Codes. I was told that if I followed those codes exactly, it would stand through a hurricane using two by six trusses, etc. I did it, and it did stand. Maybe no one else around me followed the code. This man was prepared for storms that were going to come. You and I should expect them as well. Remember that Jesus is with us in the storm. If I'm going to be in a storm, guess what? I would want Jesus to be in the storm with me, wouldn't you? The problem for the disciples was that here was Jesus with them in the storm, but he had fallen asleep. He was tired. He showed great faith that they would get through that. And now the disciples think that Jesus doesn't care. Of all the times in Jesus' ministry, why would he be asleep now? The disciples couldn't sleep. Why could he? When you and I pray during a crisis, do we wonder, God, are you hearing me? Are you going to see me through this? Are you going to make sure that no great harm comes to me through this? Are you concerned about me? You see, he rebukes the storm, and then he talks to the disciples and says, Why were you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Don't you think that I'll be with you? Why do you get anxious about the storms of life? And I think that's a statement that each of us needs to hear as well. Why do we continue to get anxious about the storms of life? But Jesus was hoping that they would trust in him in all things, even in the midst of storms of life. You and I need that reminder as well that God is always with us and has plans for us even in the midst of storms and that we can trust Him. Here's a third thing I think that stands out in this lesson for today, and Jesus will calm the storms. Sometimes He's not in a hurry. Sometimes it's not going to happen in the way we expect it to happen, but Jesus will see us through the storms. In Romans 5 we read, For while we were still weak, at just the right time, Jesus died for the ungodly. During this storm, the disciples discovered Jesus really is there with them. Listen to Mark 4.41. And they were all filled with great fear and said to one another, Who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? They were first of all afraid of the storm, but now they have a new fear. They are afraid of Jesus. Because who is he? He's not just some other guy, but he himself is God, the creator of all. And they can't stop thinking of the fear that now has overtaken them. This is true for you and me as well. In the midst of crisis, we grow in our understanding of who Jesus is. Look at what happened to Peter as he later writes. Though now for a little while, we may have to suffer grief of all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus is revealed. Think of it. In Jesus' day, those who were disabled had a very difficult life at best. There were none of the things we take advantage of today with disability placards and various ramps and all these things. And so, in that day, to live as a blind person, a deaf person, or a lame person, it was a very difficult life indeed. Their lives were a mess, and then they met Jesus, and some went away dancing and leaping, but all praising God, because they had seen Jesus, and he had helped them in their distress. How's the storm? of life that you're facing, strengthening you and your relationship with God. Everyone has faith. 
You and I have faith every time we get in our car and get on the freeway that the parts and things that are under us are going to take us safely. This morning as you got up to have breakfast, you trusted that the supplies, your coffee, all those things were put together in a clean manner so you would not get sick from them. Jesus rebuked his disciples, you of little faith. What about us? Are we more willing to trust science, technicians who design and repair aircraft, even the elevator repairmen? Are we more able to trust them than our gracious God? It's interesting that Jesus never rebuked anyone for having too much faith. Can you have too much faith in God? It never happens, does it? We're always lacking, always something that we're concerned about and forget that God is with us through that as well. Now hear this. God wants to strengthen our faith in Him so that those storms are even used for that very purpose, to bring us into the family of God for now and all eternity. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Just like Jesus knew he would be in a storm with his disciples, God knows that the storms of life that come your way and mine as well. Jesus did not avoid the storm by staying out of the boat, but rather he faced that storm with his disciples. The storms of life are not learned by reading a book, even the Bible, or avoiding life. Rather, we learn how to go through the storms of life with God. He will be with you, and we have an opportunity to learn of Jesus in that whole process. What's rocking your boat? Is it a strained relationship? A financial struggle? Maybe a health issue? Perhaps an emotional overload? You feel like you're just a little tiny boat in the sea of life with that ocean going anywhere it chooses. <coughs> Mark Twain and a friend stepped out in the middle of a rainstorm one day, and the friend said, do you think it will stop? Mark Twain says it always does. That's true of any storm, isn't it? It's here for a time, and then it will be over. You've got to go through it, though, in order for it to have its will and way and purpose in your life and mine. Jesus wants us to know today that he will always be with us through every storm that comes our way, to strengthen us, to uphold us, and to prepare us for everlasting life with Him. Praise God. Amen. And now may that peace that surpasses our human understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting.